Hi everyone, my name's Charlie, and I've only ever lost one pip case, and I have a link, we'll put a link above, so you can have a look at it. So in the past five or six years, all the rest I've won, okay? And that's whether it's initial claim, an appeal, a mandatory reconsideration, whether it's a review or a tribunal. So whatever it is, I'm just, re I'm just really good at it. Part of the reason is that I am chronically ill. I'm in varying levels of pain 24-7, I suffer with chronic fatigue right now my ribs are wrecking and i'm struggling to hold my head up but i want to get this done because this is really important i want to go through the most common mistakes right most common mistakes pip is an easy process to follow i promise it's an easy process to follow when you understand it which is why you're on my channel okay so make sure you check out the different videos um and you depending on where you are in the process but everything comes back to the points everything is about the points there is a link in the description below these points are not a secret you can just google pip assessment points thing and it will come up but they're in the description you must i repeat you must go through these points that's all they care about is how does your condition or conditions impact your daily living and all mobility they cannot assess you properly if you are not self-aware you have to understand where you fit in the PIP assessment, because if you don't, you're just going to be talking loads of different crap that's not relevant and you make it really difficult for them to figure it out. You've got to be self-aware. You've got to go through the points yourself and figure out where you are. It's really basic. It's a really simple layout. So on the screen right now will be preparing food. Like So preparing food. When you're preparing food, do you have to sit down when you're doing it because of pain or fatigue or whatever it is, if you do, it's B, see where it says use an aid, to sit down is using an aid, two points. That's it, it's that simple. You've got to figure it out for yourself. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that, uh, please cut the crap, cut the crap. Like the amount of people that go, Charlie, I've submitted evidence. Well, I do not submit evidence for a normal claim. I don't. They will check with your GP to make sure you are diagnosed. If you're not diagnosed, you can't count that condition and you have to be diagnosed or they, it's just not relevant, okay? Even though you know you've got it, it's still not relevant unless it's diagnosed. I don't submit evidence on a normal claim. I am starting to submit some evidence where I will put photographic evidence, just like what's coming up on your screen right now, photographic evidence of AIDS used in the home. What you're seeing right now is in the bathroom. So look at the photo. How many aids can you see in that photo? Is it just one, the seat? Is it two, the handle? Or is it three and the non-slip mat because she's wobbly on her feet? Three aids. So you only get two points on that. We'll put the points up right now. So you can see in the bathroom for aids, it's two points. You don't get six points. You don't get two points per aid, you just get two points for using an aid. That is relevant evidence. Send in PIP every example of when you've got your prescription. Just stop wasting their time. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting their time. It's irrelevant. They don't need to see about appointments. If your mum has written you a letter, even though PIP actually do stay in some of the forms, you can submit a letter from the relative. It really annoys me because it's not relevant. They won't take it into account. Have you ever seen Judge Judy go, oh, your mum wrote you a note, so you must be innocent? It doesn't fucking work like that. Forget it. Forget statements. If it's a loved one, it doesn't count. I don't know why they bother. I think they're just trying to soothe people so you feel like you're proving more. They don't take it into account. Forget about it. If, right, and this is another thing that does my head in, right? There's such big misconceptions on this. People think, oh, I've got to get a letter from my doctor. I must get a letter from my doctor. Then you pay 30 to 60 quid for a letter from your doctor, thinking, now they're going to believe me. Your doctor is not sat with you when you are stuck on the toilet. Your doctor does not understand that every morning when you're trying to put your socks on, you're puffing and panting, and in the end, you just don't bother wearing socks a lot because you can't get to your feet. Your doctor cannot write that and evidence it for you. Only you can explain that to Pip. Cut the crap. Please cut the crap, please. Another big thing that does my nutting, and this is due to social media, where pe I feel like people have a competition about who's got the most conditions. It's not relevant, doesn't matter. And there's also miscommunication where you'll see a lot of times online conditions that entitle you to pip. It's bullshit. 
There is no condition unless you are terminally ill. If you are terminally ill and a doctor will sign to say you are terminally ill, you get PIP automatically. That's the only time. There is no guaranteed condition. When you see the stuff on social media that says, when you see it where it says these conditions, you're entitled to PIP, again, it's bullshit. If you check the small print, it's something like, these are the most common conditions of people that claim PIP. So the small print, there are no conditions. Please, just please, there's no conditions that guarantee PIP. It's all bullshit. If people are telling you it is, you shouldn't be listening to that person. It is not true. Questions. Can I get PIP if I've got fibro? Yes, you can. Doesn't matter if you're taking medication. It doesn't matter if you're having therapy or not. It's how does your condition impact your daily living and or mobility? That's it. It's that simple. Honestly, it's that simple. Trust my success rate. I get a lot of issues with people. I spend a lot of time. I spend on average three hours talking to someone to try and figure out if they're entitled to PIP. Now, I am working on this because there's not enough support for you, for us, right? There is not enough support for us. So I'm going to work on a system that will be an automated system where you can fill out a questionnaire, Charlie version of questions, not PIP version of questions, Charlie version of questions. And then at the end of it, it will show you where you score and give you helpful tips for completing the form, right? That will be a paid product because I'm going to have to pay someone to do it, right? When you're doing, like this is, oh, just honestly, it does my nothing, right? So I'll say to someone, do you have any issues with getting dressed? And the person in their brain, I can see it. They think, well, I get dressed, so I'm all right. And I have to go, no, 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 no. Everything about PIP is can you safely, think scar, safely, consistently, and reliably scar. Because you will be scarred when you go through the PIP process because it's extremely degrading, okay? So think scar. Every time you get to a point of PIP, go, can I do this safely? Can I do it consistently? And am I reliable? Because you're probably not. Socks. Can you consistently put your socks on? Can you safely prepare a meal? Consistently. Every meal time, can you consistently prepare a meal? When it comes to walking, code name, I've got legs. When I asked her the question about mobility, so I said, how are you with your mobility? And she went, well, I've got legs. And I was like, the question isn't, have you got legs? The question is, how far can you safely, consistently and reliably scar, safely, consistently and reliably walk? When you stand, are you in pain? Does your pain get worse the more steps that you take? Is your fatigue getting worse? Are you scanning the area looking for a seat? If you go somewhere, are you constantly thinking about walking distances? It's not, have you got legs, okay? Think about that for everything. And things like getting dressed, it's like buttons. If you wore tops with buttons and zips before chronic illness, you're supposed to be able to do that. So if you were gonna wear buttons every day, because most of us stay in our pajamas, don't we? We wear easy clothes, larger size clothing, because it's easy. But for the pit process, you've got to think about it. If every day I was gonna dress like I did before I was sick, how would I manage it? Would I have to use an aid? Would I have to have assistance? And this, this is what people get so stressed about with PIP. All we've got to do is tell the truth. That's it. You just have to tell the truth. For example, if you don't wear buttons, you're just not wearing buttons because it's too much hassle. But again, think about it. If you were to wear buttons, how would you manage it? Um, there's going to be a video on AIDS coming soon, right? The answer to them would be, I can't do buttons myself, I have to use an aid. But honestly, I just don't wear clothes with buttons. I wear oversized pajamas because it's just easier. That's it. That's it. Two points. Done. All the people I've worked with I know are chronically ill and their lives are negatively impacted by their conditions or condition. I've definitely helped people with one condition. I've helped people with lots of conditions. It varies. And I always get people, because everyone I work with, none of us want to claim PIP. None of us want to be in this position. We want to be able to work. Embarrassing. We don't want to have to claim PIP. And I know there is the risk of people that are fraudulent and there are people that abuse the system. So if you're watching this to try and get easy money, fuck off. This is for people that are actually chronically ill and are suffering that really need this funding. For those of you that are chronically ill, you're gonna understand this bit totally, right? Do you ever sit there and think, but on a good day, but when it comes to getting dressed on a good day, 
this is where it's difficult when I talk to people because I'm like, right. And everyone says it. Every single person I talk to goes, Charlie, on a good day. And then I have to do the heartbreaking thing and go, when was your last good day? And you see them go, right, it's January now. This was a meeting I did yesterday or the day before. And they went, September. What the fuck? September. I'm like, if you're having like four good days a year, that doesn't really count. Okay. And then I was like, on your good day, was it a good day like an able-bodied person? Or was it a good day where you felt well enough to do the washing up, but then you were in absolute agony and it took you days to recover? Was it one of those good days? You've got to be so self-aware when you do PIP. Please really think about this. I know it sucks. This is, you've really got to be self-aware for PIP. And that's what makes, that's what's going to scar you. Remember the scar? Safely, consistently and reliably. That's the process. And it's hard for us to sit there and go, shit, I can't, I can't. And then you feel like you've got to prove it to this stranger that's judging you. I'm so sorry. It sucks, but you've got to be self-aware. Another common mistake that people make is, and I've only done this, only learned this recently. So there is a video on the channel called Urgent. We'll put a link above. You're not recording your assessments. So in a tribunal, you are not allowed to record. That is an actual legal proceeding. They record it. And in a tribunal, they will not lie. We all know that in the PIP assessments, they... The majority of the time, I hate to say it, it's the majority of the time they don't write exactly what you explain. Or they take out the bits they want to hear. Okay? You need to be recording your assessments. You're allowed to. Don't let them bully you. When you explain to them that you're recording, and you can just say, I'm recording it because I, I get I forgetful, I get nervous and I forget it's for my benefit. They will then, should, then read you a script. So they should then read you a script that basically says it's for your own personal use. You cannot put it on social media. I've recorded two. They both got the, yep, the right points. I then put that video up about urgent. And since then, I think I've recorded like three and I only put that up like, I don't know, like a week ago or something. But I've mainly been doing tribunals since then and obviously we can't record then. So I've got the recordings. These will not be going on my YouTube channel at all because we are not going to breach the rules and we are not going to breach the rules. I'm not going to put that person at risk. It's for their, to back them up. And all we want is for Pip to tell the truth. That's all we're asking. That's why you record it. Another mistake that people make is you trust the envelopes that they provide. Don't do it. I lost £1,500 for a client because I trusted them. And I sent it in their second class envelope. And they, she called after three months. Because I said, don't worry, it can take like six months plus. She called after three months. They said they never received it. I went to the post office. I told them. The woman in the post office tutted, rolled her eyes. And she said, it's funny how we can deliver to everywhere in the UK. But all the DWP stuff seems to go missing. Don't send it in their envelopes. I know it costs. Send it recorded delivery. After this video, you can save the money on the doctor's letters the GP's letters, because they're not going to help you, save the money on those letters and just spend a little bit of that money on recorded delivery. And that could save you thousands of pounds. Right. This is a biggie. This is the last one. It's about terminology. Now, I always end up giving people the eyeballs when I'm working with them. You are not lazy. If you suffer from chronic illness, you are not lazy. Right. And I get so many people that go when I ask them a question. So could you do buttons? Well, I suppose I could. No, that's not the question. Can you do buttons? Um, sometimes. It's not what I'm asking you. When did you last do buttons? Obviously, Pip aren't going to ask it this way. So you've got to be self, comes back to being self-aware. Can, can you do buttons? I suppose I could. When did you last wear something with buttons? Well, I don't wear anything with buttons because it's a nightmare to do up. My fingers hurt. I can't get them done. Right. So let me ask the question again. Can you do buttons? No. Okay. So don't say, I suppose I could. Because this is the problem, right? This is why most people lose their claims. Because Pip will guilt you into it. They will ask you the question over and over. So in the end, people are sort of like, well, I could. You know, 
especially for planning and following a journey. Planning and follow a journey. So if you say, I don't go anywhere on my own, then they'll do the, well, what if your partner, say your, your partner takes you, what if your partner wasn't well? Uh, well, a family member would take me. Well, what if they're not available? Could you get a taxi? You could get a taxi, couldn't you? Could you get a taxi? Well, I suppose I could. Well, zero points. When was the last time you got a taxi? Well, I don't get a taxi because I'm too, I can't do it on my own. So why did you agree to it with Pip? Like, you've got to be so careful in your terminology. You've, you know, like, we don't like admitting this stuff. You've got, got to just say it. So if you're not sure on anything, I want you to sit there, any question, I want you to sit there and go, when was the last time I did that? And if it's more than six months ago, the answer is you don't do it. Don't say sometimes, you say on average. If you say sometimes I can do it, that's it, zero points, because you can do it. If you say on average, I can do this three times a week. On average, I can have a shower once a week. Now it's hard to work out the averages, but you just, you've got to figure it out, okay? There's also people giving terrible advice, terrible advice, where they say, what you should say to Pip is, yes, but. So can you get dressed? Yes, but. Pip, I'm not gonna hear anything after the word yes. Zero points. Doesn't matter what sob story you give afterwards. If you say yes, that's it, you're done. You're done. And it's no good going, yes, but it causes me a lot of pain. Yes, but I'm really tired afterwards. Like, work out the average times you do it a week. And you've got to be proactive in how you explain it. You've got to, you've got to hand it to them on a plane. I avoid wearing socks because of my back. So bending to get the socks is, is just a nightmare. Mental health. I, I only have a wash. Like If you're really struggling with depression... I only have a wash once a week of that. I just can't get motivated. Yeah. Because that person could physically wash, but due to severe depression, they, they can't get themselves to do it. So don't say sometimes. Don't say yes, but. On average, I can do it once a week. And then you can explain. Or, yeah, because most of the times if we're in real bad pain, we just don't do it that often anyway. Yeah, I hope this helps. Check out the other videos. They're really good ones. We'll put a link to the number one video, which is my best step-by-step -step guide, and it goes through the points in details. You need to watch this if you're going to sort out your pip claim. This one about. Thank you.